So this is me, a city boy from Accra in Odotom, a village some few kilometers away from the famous Boti Falls here in the eastern region, trying my hands on this production process of making gari. And the reason I'm doing this is because our uh, attention was drawn to the story of a young lady called Dede Jennifer, a visually impaired student of the Ukiapiman Senior High School who was captured on TikTok, famous social media platform, preparing this gari. And today we are here in her village to try and understand her story for a visually impaired person and with the flair with which she exhibits the practice of Gary preparation to see how it is that she's able to do all these. It's a story we hear today on this edition of The Untold, right here on Ghana Web TV with me, Eche Atisu. We'll be back with more details. Back to the years, I go wondering once again. Back to the seasons of my youth, I recall a box of rags that someone gave us, and how my mama put the rags to use. There were rags of many colors, and every piece was small. And I didn't have a coat, and it was the way down in the fall. Mama sewed the rags together, soon every piece we loved. She made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. Soothing, right? With her angelic voice, Dede sings a song in appreciation of her mother's struggles just to give her a brighter future. Because of many colors, I think it, it speaks specifically about you appreciating your mom. I appreciate her so much, the efforts and what we've been through together. I mean, some people give birth and they dump them. When you go to school for the blind, we have children that were brought to the school and they've never been attended to. Like no parents would come and say, I have this child, I'm visiting him or her, but with my issue, even though we don't have that money, but she still tries, she still makes that effort. And I'm so, so proud of her, yeah. Her mother began producing Gary when Jennifer was at the school for the blind. She was losing her personal items often to thieves and with no help coming from Dede's father, her mother had to engage in various menial jobs to cater for her needs and that of her sister. Her items, including panties, were being stolen often. So I started a gari business. I do everything myself, from harvesting to frying. Her dad still insisted he was in school, even when we had another child. Because of the day, I have been working tirelessly. Knowing how her mother struggles to take care of her, Dede, despite her limitations, has gotten involved in the Gary business from peeling the cassava to sifting and to frying it into gari, Dede has mastered all the steps, needing a little to no help in doing all that now. I can't just watch her doing all those stuff because sometimes after speaking with my dad, she'll be like, oh God, so what did I do? All other parents are very lucky and I'm here. She can't even help me. I remember her telling me that when she goes to the farm to bring the cassava, there will be nobody to carry her and she's going to sit on the floor, carry the small that she can and then use the knife to pick the other one from the floor and add it on her head. You know, it, it's been my job. I can't just sit there and be watching my mom do all those things alone because I know it makes her feel bad. 
already you know, visually impairment makes her feel something which it makes every other mother feel the same but yeah I, I just don't want her to be suffering alone so gallery processing is quite a difficult task yeah because we could be here around 4 30 a.m to let me just say 11 30 p.m or 11 p.m and all you could get is twice the spawn. Yeah, so sometimes it's sometimes it, it's difficult. It's not sometimes. Gary processing is difficult. I believe that there should be a higher marketing for that. <laughs> like you sit here at like 12 hours or stuff and yeah, the smoke itself is another thing. It can cause serious headache, eye pains and stuff. Dede was born in a small village at Udotum in the Yellow Krobo municipality of the Eastern Region some 19 years ago and has lived there all her life. Like many villages, Odotum is underdeveloped and surrounded by a lot of bushes which harbour some dangerous creatures and this makes life difficult for the visually impaired like Dede. I've been living here for 19 years and that is basically my route. Yeah, so I still have the picture in mind. I once said that I want hard sight. So I know where to go. I know where to move around. And sometimes you also use the sound. Sometimes it depends on how you calculate things. My challenge here, like the last time, I think we saw a snake in our room. This is, this, this place is, <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it, it's more like a village and so when you have to even, let me just say, move apart, you, you need somebody to check whether the road is clear for you or stuff. The other time, I just passed the place and they said, ah, this is a snake. I was like, Jesus Christ, what's, what's kind of, <laughs> what is this? So living here, it's, it's a bit challenging because you don't know what's ahead of you, what's in front of you. It's not like, let's just say that a town that you'll be free, no, it's not like that here, but it's, it's all, this, there's nothing I can do about that. This is where I live. Yes, you heard her right. She once had sight, but lost it all after an unsuccessful surgery. I went into total darkness when I was like eight years old. After a surgery, after repeating another surgery in Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Um, my life as a young child, it was okay. I can't really tell you if I was born with blindness or stuff. But the problem started from the third day that I was born when they all noticed that um, I was not having a clear sight as every normal child should have had. Just, I, I grew up knowing everything like the colors. When we say blue, I know what blue is. When we say green, red, yellow, orange. Um, the trees, the flowers, and the birds and stuff. When we say somebody is dark, this person is fair. I, I know how it looks like and I still have the picture in mind. Dede was born with the assistance of a traditional birth attendant as her parents couldn't afford to pay hospital bills at the time. There were complications after her birth as the placenta failed to come out and her mother bled profusely. Her mother was rushed to the Kuforidia Hospital for urgent care and fell into coma on the way to the hospital. She woke up after two days and due to her situation, Dede didn't receive the needed attention as a newborn. The man at time now here with the day a hangman while Lino Gonoko. Lobby now about five days. After four days, I could walk with the stick. We didn't notice the problem with the baby's eye until I was breastfeeding her five days later. I realized her eyes looked so funny, so I called my sister in law to come and check, and she confirmed my fears, so we took her to Agogo, where we were referred to Kuferidia. We were disappointed when we went because 
we were told they would examine her with machines, but instead, they only gave us medicine to apply to the eyes. The condition didn't change after applying the medicine for two weeks, so we went back to the hospital and they still gave us medicine. We were then advised to take her to Asante Achim Agogo and they also gave us medicine. After a while, we gave up and started praying. A woman called Auntie Mary called me to bring her to Somania as some eye specialists had come there. We however found out that they were not specialists when we went. They advised that we go to Accra to see a specialist, but I broke down in tears because I couldn't afford that. Auntie Mary promised to help them and ask them to return to Somania, so she takes them to Accra. She took them to a hospital at Tema, but they were referred to the Emmanuel Eye Clinic where Dede had her surgery. The surgery was successful, but she cried. So we got home and we went back the following day. She had another surgery, but shortly after that, she lost her sight. Auntie Mary wanted to fly her abroad, but she was too young, and I couldn't speak English. That's why we enrolled her at the school for the blind. school for the blind. You go Dede was enrolled at the School for the Blind in 2008 and spent 11 years there. I remember my first day in school, I couldn't understand any language like English or tree and a student was like, hey, sorry. So I was like, the person said, sorry. I was like, oh, Soli means I should pray, like Soli, I was in my Krobo language. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm praying. Then the later came and said, Soli. I was like, ah, okay, my Soli, you said I should pray and I'm praying. I said it in my local language. Then they had to get, uh, should I call it a translator, somebody who can speak to you, somebody who can bring anything that I say into tree. And that's how I lived my life as a student. I was in bars, as we call it, School for the Blind for 11 years. And I still give them the accuracy because they give me the best training as every visually impaired child should have. So how did she go from someone who couldn't speak or understand a word in English to speaking the language with so much flair now? I was in P4. I didn't know how to do much then. Then there was once a teacher, like, her name is Miss Ruby. So she came to the class and she was like, Why is Jennifer? I was like, Madam, here I am. And she came to me for no reason, just because I was talking and stuff. I was like, Oh, okay. She was like, Hey, I first see her, bro. And I said, Madam, this word that you've said will not go in vain. I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do this. So that's where actually I started learning English. Initially from my P1 stage or something, I couldn't handle English very well. But ever since that day, yes, I think it was on the 5th of March, I encouraged myself that I, I would be able to make it. And I had to go back from KG to learn everything, not to repeat, but in my mind and be disturbing teachers with stuff. And that was how I got to make it. So I think School for the Blind um, contributes a lot when it comes to that factor.
From the dawn of time, people have engaged in several businesses. With the onset of technology and innovation, life has relatively been made easier. By using debit or credit cards. Mobile banking. Thank you. And your favorite mobile money? Tech has indeed married business. On BizTech, we spend time with faces behind known and upcoming businesses in the country. Learn more about the new technologies and innovation. As well as find out about the trending issues in the world of business. Join us as we serve you with a variety of compelling interviews, projects and others right here on Ghana Web TV. The stigmatization and everything. Like, you hear comments from a family member like, I don't even wish to have you as a child. I prefer to remain buried. And all of a sudden, your friends that you grew up with, parents will be telling their children not to come closer to you because they feel you, you I mean, you're going to infect them with blindness or stuff. But I managed to face it. I had to accept my challenge and move on. There is nothing I can do about it. Last year, I was coming from a quiz and from a quiz to Koforija, and I sat in a car with one lady, and she was like, "Ah, driver, and in your friendly way now, be fun, I'm here doing a car." And I was so down. I felt so so bad for it, something like that to come out. You know, why why you sit in cars? People just don't want you to get closer to them, not because of anything, but because you are visually impaired, because you are a person with disability. I believe that the society should be more educated and some concepts of mind have to be changed. And that is what uh, basically I want to do. Like people see persons with disability as... I was once told here in this house that like we are kwala because this will be your mom. People don't get that fact, you understand? And, and it's, it's a bit challenging. It's, it's one of the challenges with, for, for people with disability. But that's it, you can keep your head up and you, you also make it. The day no, oh yeah, dear pa, what me boy in Wofi. Say, yeah, yeah, girl, you say, yeah, what me posama, what me, yeah, bless you, what me, dear, and kakla, na, ya, humi. Na, if you had you must. The day is very helpful. She assists us when we are making the gari especially when she knows we are tired. She can sweep and cook. She is also very bright and has a very sweet voice. We love her despite her limitations. She hopes to become an advocate who will help make life easier for people with disabilities as well as the vulnerable in society. I'm doing all these things for my mom and then for myself and to make sure that other children, other persons with disability also will have the best education and enjoy the best in life. Not the person with disability only, but the vulnerable and the less privileged in our society. I really want to be an advocate I really want to move beggars from the street. I can tell you for a fact that 20% of beggars on the street who claim to be blind and starve, most especially those who say they are visually impaired, they are not visually impaired. It's like some a tree be, and then they put it in water, then it changes color, then they pour it on their eyes when you see it. Most people do that because they don't have any job and stuff, or they feel like begging is just the option for them in life. But I really want to encourage people, boost their morale and change that concept of mind. I really want to give the opportunity to people who deserve people. I really want to encourage people that, look, you can do it, you can make it. Dede has a sister 
and five other step siblings, but has no relationship with her step siblings as her father abandoned her, her mother, and her sister. She wishes her father will give her and her sister the same attention he gives to his other children. Really? I don't even know where he is. <laughs> really, it sometimes makes me feel bad. You know, it's it's it makes me feel like it's not like he doesn't exist on this earth. He leaves, but I just we don't have that daughter and father relationship where I can talk to my dad and we're gonna talk. Nah, it's not part of the deal. I don't think it's part of the deal in my life. So yeah, it, it makes me feel bad, sometimes emotionally depressed. Because when you go to school and with the kids, the, the only language that my mom can speak is the Kobo. And there'll be things like parent teachers association meeting, like staff, and there'll be nobody to represent because she feels that even if she comes, it'll be useless. She wouldn't understand anything. She can't say anything and she, she wouldn't be there. And I, I thought that if my dad, I just don't know how to explain this whole issue, but we don't have that relationship. And sometimes it makes me feel good. But I've accepted my challenge and I wouldn't put, push myself to somebody that always makes me an option. You know, I have to move to where I, so if I feel that my mom takes care of me and stuff, yeah, I wouldn't like to include her story in my life. Uh, not at all because yeah, anytime my story is brought up, anytime he hears about me, anytime he speaks to me, he makes me feel like I'm not important. And then the other children are important than, than me. But yeah, that's, that's life. Dede is a Form 2 as students at Okwapeman SHS, one of a few senior high schools in the country that admits blind students. She says the environment is not very friendly for people with her condition. This is a school where they do inclusive education that we have visually impaired here. The roads, the gutter, it's like the topography of the land itself is not friendly to the visually impaired at all. The structure of the school, how things, like it's really, really disturbing. And most visually impaired, like <clears throat> if I were to be with sight by now, I should have been in the university or something. Yeah. But yeah, I am in the second year. People, I know who, I know people who are much older than me and I'm still in the same class with them. But the sighters do not see it that way. You know, and you get people like 15 years, 14 years, 13 years, like those are the kind of ages that are in secondary school for now and they got to speak to you anyhow. Like, it's sometimes disturbing. But me, it, it's not part of my problem. It's not really my challenge now because I know that you don't get everything that you're supposed to get from everyone. Like, and I have to respect myself because if I don't bring my issues, you don't get that time. Some of them are respecting though. We have teachers who actually are not patient enough with visually impaired. Like me, I don't do CRS. And you have CRS students coming back to say, oh, today our madam didn't speak to us the visually impaired at all. She didn't speak with us well. She, she sometimes insults us and you have students switching to come to literature just because some teachers just don't speak to them or something, yeah. <laughs> but that's the nature of it. So sometimes you have to speak to the teacher and let the teacher understand because there are some teachers that they were not with people with visually impairment. So they don't understand the reason why if we're giving one hour, to every student to write a test, we have to give a visually impaired person another 30 minutes because the bro is a bit complicated and you apply pressure too. So it's a bit difficult, but some of them they don't really understand. So you have to go down and teach them and stuff. It's a bit challenging in school. The security with us as a visually impaired. In last year only, five laptops were stolen from students with visually impairment in Oquas. Um, so the security around the bro, like we don't have anything like burger proof and it's very, very disturbing. Now I can't go to school with laptop. The reason why we moved to school with laptop is that 
you can't tell somebody's daughter like I have a book like literature students we're using books like second class citizen um, a midsummer night dream and then like you can't tell somebody's daughter like read all these things for me so you buy the book you take it to the bro center they scan it and then you get your soft copy so with that you know there's a software on the laptop called job access with speech joyce it reads everything for you so by you you you'll you be a controller of your own world you understand and that's why we use laptop most and then sometimes you type when the teacher is teaching and you feel let me jot this and let me put this down you don't have to get frame and style and, and things and we're using those things because things visually impaired people used to learn like the sheet the frame it's difficult it's like if i were to be using pen i'll just buy it for one cd right the stylus that we used to write is like 12 cities the frame alone is like 120 cities so it's it's, it's expensive so when you have the laptop you move away from all those things you just type you understand and that's why we, we use but security is very very poor at the bro lab she urged the youth not to allow the opinions of others discourage them from pursuing their own dreams yes really you don't have to let yourself down nobody will come from anywhere and discourage you it will be yourself i had that kind of discouragement when a person said hey you want to be a musician even those of us with sight we don't even see top and you i was like oh okay let that time come and when it comes and i can't make it the time will go itself so you have to be yourself that's just one thing you have to be yourself you don't really have to listen to friends as youth you have to be secretive at times it's not everything that you have to say you have to be secretive to keep your life better you understand you don't just disclose things to friends yeah you, you may have a bestie or a best friend but mm -mm. yes and as ladies you have to work you don't know how joyful it is when when a man brings like thousand and you also oh like i can bring thousand i can bring 900 how joyful it is than like always be calling somebody i need this i need that i need this do me this do me this you have to try your level best because yeah nobody is having it easy so you have to try a level best not to be a reliability onto the society irrespective of your status irrespective of where you are coming from and the challenges that you are in now you have to get up you have to move i mean move move i like this tatiana's song like like you the song it, it really says a lot of things and you have to just be like that just be yourself just be real you just don't really listen to people sometimes you have to listen to people for advice but it's not every time that you have to take what people say because that can also bring you down she also urged parents with disabled children to give their children the opportunities to be great in future instead of keeping them away from society bring out your children let them go to school please please Yes, please let them go to school. Like I have a friend called Benedicta Entry. When everybody goes to um, YouTube and the person types, my situation cannot stop me. That, she's with Chemical TV. She has a whole lot of songs. And Benet has been denied of good and quality education. It pains me so much. My, 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 the, the first aim in, of, of me in this year, I really want to get her back to school. She lives in Asokori, Mampon, Kumasi. Where she lives is not a problem. People come from Boligatanga to, to school in school for the blind. And so I really want to get her back to school. Parents, please do not keep your children. To people with sight, yeah, you, you see your, 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 your children, you see somebody with disability and you'll be like, this person was not created by God. It's, I have a student who um, attended nursing training and I mean, a day before her post, she became officially impaired. The person had to go back to SHS because she did science. She had to go back to SHS and do general art for her to do something like readable. So life, you don't know what is ahead of you in life. So you don't just treat people anyhow. Dede wants to become a journalist one day because she enjoys her literature classes in school. Literature. 
I think I love that subject so, so much. I love it so much. I, I enjoy it. And I think I want to speak good, good English and be a journalist and be fluent and speak well too. So I would, I, I would love to write very good English and great, great stories. So I have to deal with literature. And I think I enjoy it so much. It's not a challenging. Dede also hopes to become a musician so she can become a source of inspiration to people through her music. I really want to inspire people with my words, words that comes out of us. Sometimes a person goes into a situation and when he or she turns left, right, there's nothing. The only thing you have is music. So I really want to change people's life through music. I really want to speak to people through music. I want to empower somebody, move somebody's life. I really want to turn my mess into a message in the music. Gary, or what we know more contemporarily as cassava flakes, is what has inspired today's story on The Untold here on Ghana Web TV with me, Eche Atisu. We spoke to Dede Jennifer, and we are glad that she joined us to hear her inspiring story as a visually impaired person, a student of the Okiopiman Senior High School in the Eastern Region, and we hope that you join us again another time as we bring you inspiring stories as we do here on The Untold. Remember, there is more news on www.ghanaweb.com for your consumption. Until next time, stay safe and be good. I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors. My mama made for me.